Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, our webinar, um, Audio Ads from Creation to Distribution. I see people are still joining, so we'll probably give it about one to two more minutes, maybe three more um, to start. Uh, maybe while we're waiting, I can go over some housekeeping details. We've got about um, the, the presentation and demos and what we're going to talk about will take about 35 to 40 minutes, so we are going to leave some time for questions at the end, but there is a question box there and feel free to type in any questions as we're going along. If they're quick questions, we'll monitor that and try to answer them as, you're, as we're going, but we'll also have time at the end to answer any questions that you have. So um, please, even though this is a webinar, we'd love to you know, be available to answer any questions you have and make it as interactive as possible. All right, as I said, I'll give it about maybe two to three more minutes as I see people are still, or a lot of people are still joining as we're talking and we'll get started about two or three minutes after the hour. Thanks. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Kate Gerwey. I'm the VP of Marketing at AdsWiz. Uh, Ian Murphy from AdsWiz uh, slash Audio Go and Kitty Gould from Bunny Studio will also be uh, speaking. Thank you very much for uh, you know your time. I know your time is valuable for, for spending an hour with us to learn about um, audio advertising. Um, we think we've got a really interesting uh, hour here ahead of us to to share with you some of the really cool things that we're doing. Um, I, I said this just a few minutes ago, but there's a number of people joining, so I'll repeat this a little bit of housekeeping. Um, there is a question box um, on your panel there. We will have time at the end of the presentation for questions, but feel free to type these questions in as we're going along and we'll monitor them. And if they're quick questions, we're Happy to clarify them as we go along. And at the end, we'll leave plenty of time for additional questions that you have. Okay, so with that, um, I will get started um, and welcome. What we're gonna cover today is uh, we'll talk a little bit about the digital audio opportunity and why what digital audio is and the opportunity um, for you uh, and your business. Um, digital audio now in 2020 during this sort of unusual time that we're in with uh, with COVID-19 best practices. We'll walk through a demo uh, of Audio Go and how you can um, you know run your own digital audio ads uh, anywhere. We'll get more into that, and then we'll go through how to get your ad created and um, have Bunny Studio talk a bit about why online creative outsourcing and additional creative services that are offered. So uh, with that. Um, what is digital audio? So um, a lot of people, when they think of audio advertising, they really think of, you know, traditionally think of kind of buying commute time in your car. It's been like terrestrial radio, but digital audio is streaming music. It's Pandora, iHeart, Spotify. It's online radio, like when you're listening to uh, radio on your computer or on your phone or any, you know, anywhere while you're uh, that's not sort of on a radio station, AM, FM radio station in your car. It's podcasts. Um, it's a, a podcasts are exploding. Smart speakers. Uh, one out of four homes have smart speakers today, and connected cars. And the reason why it's important to 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 um, understand the difference between digital audio and regular, you know, kind of traditional radio, is that it is targeted, it's personalized, and it's measurable. And we'll get more into this, but it's a it's a different way to reach uh, a person in a way that's extremely effective. And your message can get to the person that you want uh, in a message in a way that reaches specifically to them and you can measure, which is very different than kind of your traditional 
um, you know, audio or radio advertising. Uh, the other thing that's really interesting to, to think about, we know this, but it, digital audio is really an integral part of our everyday lives. So before noon, the average person has already listened to two hours of digital audio. And what happens is people wake up, they look at the news on their smart speaker, they'll listen to a podcast as well, usually when they were going to work or if they're in the car, um, they'll turn on music, uh, you know, and it's, and all of this is just integrated into our everyday lives. I mean, people are, have audio uh, around them all the time. And so it's, it's something that is, is really a part of our, of our, um, uh, of our, of our living. And it is extremely pervasive and very effective. So 180 million people, this is 64% of the population, listen to digital audio every month. So again, that includes Pandora, Spotify, iHeart, podcasts, connected cars, smart speakers. Um, the number is just really exploding. On average, they spent four and a half times listening to digital audio every day. And it's effective if you think about it, when you hear an audio ad, it 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 you know impacts you more. And so the the data shows that there's a 24% increase in recall versus like seeing a, a display ad. So it's in a, a very effective um, uh, medium. Um, now we're in a very uh, you know unusual uh, uh, time in in history. You know to be honest and. Um, I trust that everybody is, is safe and, and healthy uh, out there, but um, it is really a part of the new normal that we live in today. So this was a study that was done um, about six weeks ago, and it was done by Nielsen, where they, they talked about kind of radio as comfort food in a time of crisis. And, and what this said was that 83% of consumers say they're listening to audio, to radio as much uh, or, you know, as much or more than before the pandemic, and that the 60% hold it in high regard to deliver timely information around the outbreak, and 42% have said it's helped them deal with the current crisis. And some of some of what is happening there is, um, for example, listening to a podcast. You know, and we're all we're all doing it. You're you're hungry for the news. You're hungry for the latest. You kind of find comfort in that you know, um, that that person on your digital audio radio station that you listen to that kind of speaks to you and gives you the news. So it's, it is kind of now more than ever really um, becoming a very, um, even more integral in our lives and a very effective way to, to, you know, to reach people and get your message, get your message out. Um, and if you think about kind of audio and connecting as a as a as a business and connecting with your target audience when with advertising it's a great way to connect with your audience it's a very personal and immersive experience versus kind of a you know a display ad or something that someone might see kind of during the course of the day that people are often listening with with headphones or they're they're, they're listening fairly, fairly intently you have their undivided attention um, we have we measure listen through rates and our listen through rates are our ads are not skippable and um they're like over 90 percent. so it's a very personal immersive experience and then you can target and we'll go through this with the in the demo you can target if you want to reach you know 18 to 24 year old women that live in salt lake city that listen to jazz music and are in this zip code you know, we can get to that level of targeting. So it's very targetable. And then, which Ian will also show you in a few minutes when we talk about the demo, you can measure, you know, up to the minute exactly how many people have heard your ad, exactly how many times it's been played, what percent have listened to it, what percent have clicked on your banner. So you can measure everything. You have complete transparency. You can you know, target your audience and then measure uh, exactly what's happening. So it's a very very unique and great way to connect with your audience. Very high level here, some, some best practices in terms of, you know, some of you may or may not be new to kind of an audio ad. It's like, well, what, what do I do with an audio ad? And we'll talk about this where you can easily create an ad and easily run a campaign, but you know, what, what are some things I should think about? Well, one, you, you wanna define your advertising goal. So 
you may want to reach as many people as possible. So that would be, uh, my goal is really to have broad reach. So I'll want everyone to hear that at once, but I want as many people to, to hear it as possible. Or I really want to, you know, increase awareness. And so with that, and I know usually we're trying to do both, but kind of with that, you might say, well, I want, you know, each person to hear my ad two times or four times or six times or more times. So there's there's that kind of um, uh, difference. And Ian will show you about how you can, um, kind of massage your your campaign and and um, achieve either of those goals. Uh, you do want to choose your audience. So rather than just saying, okay, I'm going to buy this, you know, this in this publication or in this commute time, you want to think like, okay, who am I really trying to reach? Who's my target audience? And you have the ability to target your audience. Um, in an audio ad, uh, you want to have a very clear call to action. So you don't want to just have the ad go and someone's like, oh, that's neat. What do I do now? Where do I go? So have, you know, visit this URL, call this phone number, you know, download this app, um, go to this address, you know, that you, you want to have a very specific call to action. And then track performance. You can try different things and see what works, uh, what works and, and what doesn't with some of these specific um, calls to action. So wanted to just give a, go, give a little bit about that. So, um, you, you know, with, with audio, you really can create, you know, one-to-one -one targeting and a personalized experience that allows you to connect with people in the course of the day, in the moments that matter. So it's a, it's again, it's a very effective medium. Now, um, before now, now that I've gotten you all excited about digital audio advertising, uh, before now you'd say, okay, that's great. Um, what can I, how do I get it? What can I do? And and as a local advertiser or a smaller advertiser, if you're not doing a you know, a 10 or 20 or $50,000 audio ad buy, you'd say, well, how do I, how do I do it? Where do I start? And um, I, I'm not, I don't have this huge budget and I don't know how to create an ad. You know, you really, you really couldn't, um, it really wasn't accessible to you. Uh, and now it is. So uh, the service that, that we um, have uh, is called Audio Go. It is, um, it allows you to easily, add audio advertising to your digital campaigns. And what we've done is we've aggregated um, audio advertising inventory from, um, from, sorry, from, uh, uh, from Pandora, iHeart, TuneIn, Ontravision, uh, Cox and Cumulus, and also now Stitcher for podcasts. And so we've got premium audio inventory all in one place. Um, you only have to spend a minimum of $250. We'll create an audio ad for you, and it'll be it'll be available within 24 hours. Uh, and you can target by age, by gender, by location, by the time of day, if that's important to you. We have it available in Le in English or Spanish, and you can also target by music genre. And coming soon will be the ability within probably the next four to six weeks uh, will be the ability to target by um, behavioral segments. I want to reach um, moms or I want to reach fitness enthusiasts or, you know, geeks, you know, gadget geeks or tech geeks or, you know, business, business people or that kind of thing. So we, we, um, you have the ability to really target your audience. It's easy to get going and you'll see that in just a minute. You can be up and running in five minutes and there's a dashboard that gives you progress against all of your, um, your, how much you've spent, uh, how many people have heard your ad, your impressions, and you can pause it at any time. And then for those of you that may be more, um, you know, more adept, we've got real-time insights into available inventory to, to manage your media planning. Um, you can easily duplicate campaigns and save drafts. You can pause at any time. And we've got a lot of, of extra features like that. So it's a, um, this has been up and running for about a year. Uh, technically, we're still in, um, well, well, we'll be announcing that we're coming out of beta uh, in July, but we've really been out of beta, you know, in the last, you know, couple months. So it is um, fully up and running. We've got, you know, thousands of, of advertisers and it's a, it's a, you know, it's really a fabulous service. So I think with that, Ian, I will hand it over to you. Uh, here we go. So. Whoops, let's see. Um, uh, all right. 
There you go. So, Ian, uh, over to you. Do you have that there? Yes, I do. Thanks so much, okay. Kate. Uh -huh. All right. And so thanks, Kate, for kind of walking us through, you know, the digital audio opportunity and digital audio in this new normal in 2020. And, and as Kate mentioned, we, we really wanted to just kind of show you the platform. Uh, it's super straightforward. We designed it to be easy to use. And as Kate mentioned, you can get things up and running in, in really a matter of minutes here. And so the first thing you'd want to do is, is go to audiogo.com and we'll have a specific link for you after this to help you take advantage of a, a special offer that, that we'll be giving. But first and foremost, what you'd want to do is, is sign up. So on the top right there, click the sign up button. And then it's fairly typical, uh, first name, last name, email and password. Um, then once you hit a, agree, you're going to go ahead and hit next. And then again, kind of typical to other platforms, you'll receive a, uh, a confirmation code that you'll enter in so that you can get actually get logged in. And then once you get logged in, it's going to take you to your to your dashboard. And so the first time you log in here, it'll offer you a, a tour of the website of the platform. And it'll also uh, right where it says no results found here. Instead, it will say launch your first campaign. Um, and so you can either click there or in the top right, we have these two buttons. So first you see request audio ad, which I'll touch on in a moment. Uh, but next you see create new campaign. So in this scenario, let's pretend that we, we have the audio ad again. I'll show you how to request that in a moment. But in the top right, when you hit create new campaign, that's going to take us to, to this page here. And so what you're going to want to do is go ahead and put the name of a campaign. Go ahead and enter in your campaign budget. And as you may have saw, the minimum spend with, with AudioGo is $250. And at that, at that $250 level, that's about 13,900 or so audio ads that we'll deliver. So you get really a lot of great exposure um, um, for, for a very affordable rate. And you can choose where those ads go, who's gonna be listening to those ads. Next is your campaign start and end dates. So, with AudioGo, you can run campaigns for a day, for a week, for a month. It really is entirely up to you. So for sake of example, let's say we're just going to run something for, uh, for a week here. And the minute you edit your campaign budget and your schedule, you'll start to notice on the right the, the audience guide will begin to populate. And so the audience guide, really, it's kind of an inventory forecasting tool, uh, but it's, it's very helpful when you're building out your campaigns for you to see the estimated of unique listeners that you're going to reach the uh, estimated number of ads that will be delivered. And so you kind of start to see that showing up here. So on the top, this is the estimated number of ads or impressions that we're going to deliver. So at this $500 budget level, we're expecting about 27,800 ads to go out. And then at the bottom here, you'll see the estimated unique uh, listeners that we're going to reach. And going back to what Kate mentioned about best practices for, for reach versus awareness, uh, the targeting is really how you're going to be able to, to, to uh, choose that. So, you know, if you wanted to have more of a, a reach campaign where I want to reach as many unique individuals as possible, we recommend to keep that targeting fairly broad. And if you really wanted to go for the awareness side of things where a certain community or a certain group of listeners hear the ad multiple times, you really want to kind of narrow that targeting down. And again, I'll show you that in just a moment here. And then one other thing to note, you can see this 927 uh, million plus uh, impressions with audio go since we work across a, a network of publishers we really have aggregated a lot of inventory so there's very few cases where we run into issues where we don't have uh, inventory available but that's also why it's important to keep an eye on the audience guide when you're building out your campaigns so just just wanted to point out how to use this feature here and you'll see it update as i as i go along Next, what you can see here is the, the scheduling. So if you'd like with Audio Go, you can choose the day of the week and time of the day that your ads will run. Uh, this kind of, I guess, previous to the new normal, a typical use case of this would really be when we're trying to reach, um, you know, commuters when they're heading to work, kind of people during rush hour traffic. Let's say you wanted to do that, you can simply drag and drop. And as you do that, the audience guide will start to, will start to update. So it's an entirely optional feature. Did want to show you that it's available. And in cases where, uh, you know, there's some time sensitivity or there's a, a benefit to reaching listeners at a certain time for your offering, you can absolutely use that. Here's where you'd actually upload your audio ad itself. So you can drag and drop or go ahead and click on this and it'll pull down a menu of your computer so you can find your ad. 
We do also want to make sure that we select which language the ad is in to make sure that we run it on the right content. We want to make sure that English ads run on English content and same for Spanish, running on Spanish content. And as Kate mentioned, not only can we create audio ads for you in Spanish, but we can target Spanish listeners uh, with Spanish ads. Next, we have the display banner. So with Audio Go, you can include a complimentary display ad that's free of charge, doesn't count towards your budget or spend, anything like that. And we absolutely recommend doing this. So this is really so when, when users are on their phone or on their desktop, they can tap or click to, to learn more about your offering. And so we have three different sizes that we accept. If you hover over this, you'll, you'll kind of see the three different recommended sizes. Um, and we do recommend including three display ads to maximize your exposure. This destination URL here, that's where we're going to send folks to tap or click on the uh, display ad. Um, and you can also include uh, Google UTM parameters in here to link it up with your, with your analytics. Billing reference, entirely optional. This is if you wanted to put different credit cards on file for different campaigns and wanted to remember which cards you were using, uh, you can absolutely use this as a uh, field to identify that, but it's an optional field, so no need to fill it out. And then most importantly, of course, is really defining who you're going to target. So as Kate mentioned with AudioGo, you can target by location, gender, age group, as well as content type. So a lot of different options. And then with the location targeting, um, as you can kind of see in the menu, we have a, a handful of, of options here. So at the most uh, macro level, you can target uh, states or statewide. Um, then from there, you can target down to the DMA or MSA, which it's just kind of a, a greater market marketing area um, designated by, by Nielsen. It's kind of back to the, the TV um, advertising days. Um, you can also target by county, by city, or even down, down to the zip code. And so it's very easy to use. You simply start to fill out the field, uh, the place you want to target, and you'll start to see the relevant options, the DMA, the county, the city, and then the same goes for the, uh, for the zip codes. You just start to enter in your zip code, go ahead and click that, and it'll again our audience guide will will update as you uh, as you choose different targeting criteria um, one other thing to note on this is if you're doing zip codes you don't have to do all zip codes you can of course include a list of zip codes but this can really be a, a, a variety you can do zip codes cities counties all of that so I just wanted to point that out that you can kind of have a blend of different location targeting selected and so I, I chose a, a zip code in, in San Francisco and now as you can see on the right the audience guide looks a bit different so now we're seeing this blue message and it says, hey, you know, your audience selection is good. And the reason we're seeing that is because the listeners are now hearing the ad, you know, four, five different times right, right in there. Um, and so we certainly recommend um, keeping an eye on this and especially for awareness campaigns, we want to make sure to have kind of this balance where the listeners are hearing the ad multiple times because that really is what's going to help with your, with your brand recall. So that's how you set some location targeting. Again, we do have the other options here for gender, um, age group, as well as content type. And with content type, we have a few different options here. So we have the music option, which kind of has 19 core uh, different music genres that you can select. And then we also have our talk genres. And as Kate pointed out, um, we're, we're also bringing on a uh, podcasting publisher. And so this talk content includes, today it includes talk radio as well as some podcasts. And now we're going to have a, a, you know, a lot more of the uh, a podcast type inventory coming up. So very exciting there. And the way that our talk categories are, are broken out or talk content, it's all broken out by, uh, by category. So you select the relevant categories that you have here. Again, you can use all these targeting features, of, you know, only a select few. If you're not going to use them, you can simply turn off the green buttons here. So a lot of flexibility in terms of reaching your, reaching your audience. So once you have your campaign set up, and, and by the way, I know we, we talked through this, but if you have your audio ad ready to go, you know who you want to target, you have your display creative ready, this all takes a matter of, of two, three minutes. I mean, really, it's very, very quick. Once everything looks good, your, your audio ad's in here, your campaign's set up. You can go ahead and hit schedule campaign. And once you do that, the campaign will, will effectively go live for the date that you set. And so then what you can actually do is, is track your progress. So if you go back to your dashboard, after you launch your campaign, you'll, you'll see something like this. So you'll be able to see how much your budget has been spent um, compared to the total budget or budget goal that you set. You'll be able to see how much time is left on your campaign or how many days are left. 
And then in, in essentially real time, I believe it's about fifth, every 15 minutes or so it updates, you'll be able to see how many audio ads have been delivered, how many unique listeners that we've reached. And so in this case, this particular campaign decided to do more of a reach uh, campaign. It's a, a recruiting campaign. So they're trying to reach as many individuals as possible. Um, and that's, that's why you can see here that the reach almost mirrors the, uh, the impressions. Then we have a couple of conversion metrics on the right. So on the right, you can see what we call our listen through rate. And kind of as Kate mentioned with, with audio, one great benefit is free listeners typically can't skip uh, through the ad, which is why we it's very common to see the high 90 percentile here in terms of the listen through rate, which is great as an advertiser. They hear the full message. And then we can also track the, the click through rate. So as mentioned, you can include a display ad with audio go. And so we are able to track the how many clicks uh, do occur. And, and one thing to point out here as well, while it's, it's great that we can track clicks and you know it's absolutely uh, helpful. Clicks aren't always the best measurement of success for a for an audio advertising campaign. And really the reason for that is the, the typical user experience. If we kind of think back to when we we're streaming audio, a lot of times we're, you know, we're maybe we're working out, we're on a run, maybe we're driving, and I guess not so not so much anymore, but maybe we're driving to work or driving to a different place. Maybe we're socializing, maybe we're actually working on the computer, but the you know the audio is on our phone. So a lot of times the, the user isn't looking at the screen, which is why the, the clicks may not be the best measurement of success, but that's really the benefit of, of audio, right? Kind of as, as Kate mentioned, it's, it's pervasive, it's everywhere, and we can reach listeners at kind of a really important moments during their day where typical display advertising couldn't necessarily reach them. So we always like to say audio is on when screens are off, which is really why it complements all the other digital um, advertising you're doing and just as a great tool for, for conversion and for brand recall. So another thing to note on the dashboard, this is what you'll be able to see um, you know, at the kind of high level. You can always export this information. And in fact, you can even pause your campaign. So let's say for whatever reason you're running your campaign and you feel like the, the targeting isn't right, or maybe you want to change out the display ads, feel free to just go ahead and pause the campaign, click into it, and then on the top right, hit edit campaign, and that'll allow you to, to make the edits. But as you can see here, if you also click on the campaign, you're gonna get a campaign level report. So this is a bit more granular insights into what's going on with your campaign. You could see the um, impressions on a daily level. You can also see the distribution of your impressions by content type. So this really helps in terms of in terms of optimization. So maybe as an example, in this case, we notice the electronic genre is kind of far and away the um, uh, the most listened to by the or, uh, by the listeners, and that's where most of the ads were going. So maybe on the next campaign, we'll kind of focus around this genre and see if we can really reach the uh, you know these listeners and kind of continue to optimize from there. So um, just some helpful information. Same goes for listeners, and we can also see clicks on a daily basis here as well. So you can see when the clicks occurred and how many. You can always export this information. Um, and then last thing to point out is this, this feature, and then Kate mentioned this as well, is we've recently included this duplicate campaign feature. So let's say you just ran a campaign, it was awesome, it worked really well, and you wanna simply run it again. You can go ahead and click this button down at the bottom and it'll pull up a, a new campaign with all the same information and all the same creative assets. So you can hit schedule in a matter of seconds. Uh, this is also helpful if you are have very similar campaigns and you want to create, you know, let's say a handful of campaigns with slightly different targeting or different creative. Go ahead and duplicate out the campaigns, make the slight adjustments, and go ahead and schedule them. So really did want to make it easy to to schedule campaigns and run them as as needed, um, at you know self serve whenever whenever you need to. And so this is all great, but of course unless you have an audio ad. Uh, you know, we, we can't run. And so that's was something that we realized that not everyone has access to professional voiceovers and to professional audio ads. And so that's why we were really excited um, and the timing was great. And I think Kitty will touch on this, but we, we partnered with uh, Bunny Studio and they manage, um, and that's in this top right button here, request audio ads, and that'll take you here. So they've kind of managed this creative process uh, for us and we've worked together on this and we're really solving a, a great problem, which is providing high quality audio ads quickly at an affordable rate uh, to advertisers. And so I'll let Kitty get to all the great information about their service, but in terms of requesting an audio ad, all you need to do is fill out the script. And we have some tools and best practices to do that. And 
on audio go the audio ads are 30 seconds in length so that's why we have this kind of 70 word maximum so once you fill out your script and you you know include a great call to action make it very strong make it unique to audio go make the messaging kind of relevant to the, the audience you're targeting really kind of thinking through that um, once you have that script filled out here next you choose the language of the ad so as i pointed out we can target spanish listeners of course we also want to be able to offer the ability to create spanish ads so we can absolutely do that and one thing to note there is if you did want to create a spanish ad today we we don't offer translation services in audio go so we would need the the ad translated uh, but the people who will be reading the ad and producing the ad are native spanish speakers next you select your voice type so you have a couple different options for male and female Then you can select your background track, so the song that we'll be playing uh, during the ad. And the great thing here is you can actually click on the um, ad, it's, uh, the background track itself, and go ahead and preview that, so you'll know what it sounds like. And then lastly, any instructions for the voice actor. So let's say there's a certain pronunciation, um, maybe there's a certain energy you want in the ad, you want it exciting, or you want it to be very professional or very serious. Go ahead and include those notes in here accept the terms and submit the ad once you submit the ad we're going to go ahead and hand it over to bunny studio for them to do their their great work on producing a, a professional ad and our turnaround time is typically about 48 hours uh, maximum about two business days i mean lately it's really been closer to 24 to even less than that in terms of uh, a turnaround time which is great and we also are very flexible so let's say after we produce the ad if there's anything you know off about it or you wanted to make some changes we do offer one free revision and so we're certainly willing to work with you to to make sure that the ad sounds the way it should so that's the the platform with audio go I uh, did want to just walk you through it real quickly and so next what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and hand it over to Kitty because now that you've seen how to request an audio ad with us and kind of how this works she's gonna dive a little bit deeper about you know the um, how we work together, the problem we're solving, and just really all the great services that they offer. So I'll go ahead and pass the pass the mic over to Kitty here. So Kitty, let me know when you can um, when you can see this. Thank you, Ian. Um, yes. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, great to be here. I'm Kitty, and I'm key account manager here at Bunny Studio. Um, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about Bunny Studio, about how we work, um, where we're going as a company and how we work alongside Audio Go. Um, Bunny Studio is basically a creative fulfillment platform and we enable you to fulfill any creative need that you may have um, by teaming you up with the world's best creative professionals in a nutshell. Um, and we offer a variety of different creative services, one of them being audio ads. Um, and I think where the relationship with Audio Go sort of came about was that we both wanted to be able to make audio ads and audio production accessible to every type of user. Um, and Audio Go um, was looking for that creative step, so to speak, um, a partner that had been in the creative outsourcing game for a while that could handle the high volume of ads that come through um, their platform every single day. Um, and that's what we have become essentially is the creative step for quick, high quality and affordable audio production. Um, we have delivered uh, close to a thousand ads now for Audio Go in the last eight, nine months, which is obviously fantastic. And that number is going up more and more as people realize the benefits of audio advertising. Um, and we're delivering them in under 24 hours at the moment, um, which is absolutely fantastic. And our aim is to get them down to you know under 12 hours. Um, and so we're basically challenging that sort of misconception that professional audio production can be really time consuming. You know, that couldn't be further from the truth. It's actually very, very quick. Um, so what is an audio ad exactly? Um, an audio ad is a combination of a script, um, a professional voiceover, background music and sound effects and post-production. 
And this is a service that we have been offering for almost a year now. And it was born when we realized that a very high number of voiceover projects that were coming through our platform were actually for um, an audio ad or radio spot purpose. Um, and so we took it upon ourselves to basically provide um, end to end audio production for our customers. And what's really great about this service is that it's extremely flexible. Um, you know, you can send us through any of the assets that you would like to use, whether you want to use your own, you know, jingle or own track or something, or we can do the whole thing from scratch. Um, it's available in actually 60 plus languages um, and it's affordable. Um, and as I mentioned before, it's extremely, extremely quick. And what we do on our end is basically match your ad to the best actor out there um, based on your voice requirements. So as you saw in the audio go um, project form, you need to put you know the age that you're looking for, the gender, the language, etc. We receive those requirements and match you accordingly. And what really makes it easy for us to create um, and deliver a great audio ad in very quick time um, and I can't stress this enough, is really clear instructions. Um, so we do um, entice you to be as detailed as possible when instructing voice actors, you know, sharing branding guidelines, references, um, because you have to remember that these voiceover actors are real people, you know, and they're going to respond to any help that you can give them. And it will be super beneficial to be as detailed as possible. Um, so why online creative outsourcing? Um, I think that for many still, the thought of using an online service to outsource uh, creatives is still a daunting one. Um, and there's definitely a huge misconception that it's more difficult than using freelancers that you familiarize yourself with or talent agencies that you've been working with for you know, the last 10 years or whatever. Um, and one of the reasons our platform actually exists and why we were built is to basically cancel out the back and forth between customer and talent to make the outsourcing process completely painless. Um, and voiceover outsourcing has typically been known for being a very, you know, very expensive, um, a complex process involving copyright laws, you know, high rates, lengthy turnaround times. And there was definitely an opportunity to not only make the process of obtaining a voiceover far more simple, but also to connect people to creative talent globally. Um, and there are a few creative pain points that we are solving with our business model. And one of them is speed, which I've touched upon already. Um, you know, you can get an audio ad turned around in under 24 hours, but also we cater to a deadline. So we cover every time zone as we're a remote company, which is very beneficial. And it, it means that production never stops, basically. Um, the second one is quality. Um, we have very high quality standards and there's definitely a misconception when um, outsourcing creatives that the quality may not meet the standard that you're used to. This couldn't be further from the truth. You know, we um, have a very rigorous quality control process. Every single deliverable goes through a sound engineer before it's delivered to you. Um, we also don't just work with any talent that comes our way we have a strict application process and we only actually approve about two percent of applicants that apply to work with bunny studio um so we're very strict and we only work with the best professionals um affordable pricing but most importantly we offer a full buyout system so you don't have to worry when it comes to you know copyrights for voiceovers for example the pricing is always up front um, there's no need to negotiate rates with with voice actors which um, can definitely be a cumbersome process. Um, and lastly, uh, peace of mind, which I think is a really, really key benefit to, to um, online outsourcing, because I think anybody can tell you that building a creative campaign can be uh, you know, complex at times, but by making the process as lean as possible, which is what we've tried to do, and as you've seen in the Audio Go project form, you literally just need a script to get started with an audio ad. Um, we've removed some of that mental burden um, and you can be assured that your project is going to get fulfilled successfully. Um, our fulfillment rate of audio ads with Audio Go is 100%. So it's a number that we're very proud of, um, but it's because we've built this very you know, repeatable process with our technology um, and making the process completely streamlined. Um, and lastly, we do offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And so, you know, Ian did 
touch upon the revision, etc. And we won't stop um, working until you're 100% satisfied um, with your ad. Um, we offer a bunch of different creative services, if you weren't aware. Um, we started out with voiceover, moved into audio ads, and we realized when we realized that there was sort of this demand for end to end audio production. Um, but as more and more people are going from offline to online outsourcing, especially during the time that we're going through now, we as a company needed to be able to cater for all the possible creative needs um, our customers may have. Um, and so we realized a long time ago that, you know, it doesn't just stop at one service, um, but the creative possibilities are endless. And so we do offer a variety of services um, that you can see on, on my slide, but from, you know, localization services, such as translation, transcription, dubbing, um, writing services from blog posts to scripts to web pages, video, you know, motion graphics, 2D animations and design, which could be from banners to web design to illustrations. Um, and so our aim as a company is basically to become this one stop shop for creative, ser creative services, sorry. Um, and this meaning that we're constantly striving to to cater for any industry or individual that could need to outsource any type of creative service or have any type of creative pain point for that matter. Um, and so if anyone has another creative need, uh, um, you know who to call now. Um, and that's where I finish. And last but not least, you know, if anybody has any questions about anything we've covered today, um, whether it's with regards to production, you know, how to get started with a campaign, um, questions about any other Bunny Studio service, then now is the time to ask them. And I just wanted to add um, that all webinar attendees today get $50 off when you run your first campaign with Audio Go using the code GoBunnyWeb50. And you'll also get $50 off any other Bunny Studio service by emailing myself, kitty at bunnystudio.com, if that could be of interest. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, Kitty. And I, I do see there have been some questions that I've been trying to answer kind of in the in the question box, but um, I'll they may be of interest to other people. So I'll kind of uh, read them and answer them. But please feel free to type in more questions uh, if people have them. Uh, one is about targeting outside the US, specifically the UK and Australia. Um, right now, um, Audio Go is available only in the United States, but um, Audio Go comes to you from a company named AdsWiz. Um, we are um, uh, we were purchased by Pandora, which was purchased by SiriusXM, so we're part of a larger company, but we were founded and have a very strong presence um, in Europe and outside the US. So we, we do plan to expand um, outside the US in 2021 as would be a safe kind of timing. So maybe later this year, but, but, um, but uh, the plans are for, for next year. Um, I see a specific question from Paul, and we'll get back to you on that. Uh, the next is, do we have a way for controlling frequency? And so I think this may have been asked um, before Ian uh, went through the demo, yeah. but to um, when you are setting up your campaign uh, and you, uh, we, we've tried to make it as transparent as possible on the right with the audience insights guide. So as you adjust kind of the targeting criteria, the the length of the campaign, you know, exactly who you're targeting, you can see um, do that kind of math of how many impressions you're getting and how many unique people you're reaching so we wanted to make that as transparent as possible so for those of you that want to make that trade-off between reach and frequency uh, you have all the information there at your fingertips to do that and you can get that information in real time as you adjust the targeting um, that does update uh, one was can you change the audio portion of a duplicate campaign and yes that's that's kind of the um, you know, when we first launched the, the product a year ago, this was one of the first features that people asked for because what people might uh, would do is, let's say you're running the same campaign in 10 different zip codes, um, but it's the same targeting criteria. And, you know, so you can set that up once, duplicate it, and then just upload the different audio or um, adjust the zip code and just make the, the couple of edits and changes that you'd like. And so that's the when you duplicate it, it allows you then to 
edit any specific criteria um, that you would like. Um, what else? Um, then there's a, um, I don't know, Kitty, how you'd want to answer this. There, it, it says, uh, great webinar, thank you. I was just wondering what is the cost of the ad production from Bunny Studios? So we did talk about with Audio Go, it's, um, it's $10 for an audio ad, but I think depending on what services you get, I, I don't know, uh, Kitty, if there's any high level information you want to get there, if people should just contact you directly, depending on what they're looking for. Um, yeah, a good idea would be to contact me directly because it does depend on the length of your audio um, and specific requirements. So yes, please feel free to, to email me at kitty at bunnystudio.com. Fantastic. Uh, and then the next is, what is the cost for banner ad design? That would be you, Kitty. That is also a fantastic question, which I would like to address by email as I'm unsure and I should know this and I apologize for not knowing off the top of my head, um, only because it's a service that has very recently launched. Um, so it would depend on, yeah, some requirements and for me to do a bit of a background check um so please email me that question as well and apologies great no worries at all next question is can we set a daily budget or maximum that's a great question because i know in some of the other digital you know i think facebook and google have have something like that the way you would do that what we do is we paste the campaigns evenly and so let's say you um set up 250 dollars uh over a 25 day period, it may not be exact, but you should more or less track to $10 a day. You know, so it's that that kind of, you know, you right now we don't have a feature that says don't spend over this much a day, but if you kind of do the math in your head uh, um, to on the length of the campaign and the pricing, it typically does some days it you know depends it might bump up a little and then down the next day but it will roughly um pace evenly and you'll get your um sort of your daily your daily number and then the way the credit card is charged ian you may know this it doesn't you won't i think we charge every 250 dollars is that right um yeah yeah so the yeah. way that the billing works is uh, we have a payment threshold that starts off at 250 dollars and you'll receive a bill um, each time you kind of reach that threshold and it, it won't be exactly 250 it'll be you know, give or take a few dollars here and there um, but then let's say you have a remaining balance as you move into the end of the month so a good example is if we had a, let's say 300 dollars campaign you reach that 250 spend but if your campaign schedule runs into the next month let's say it goes into july um, you know you will see a bill for the ads delivered at the end of the month so there's kind of this payment threshold and then the um, end of month uh, balance that you'll that you'll pay and the good thing with audio go is you you only pay for ads that have been delivered um, the last thing I note on that is with the payment thresholds you do have the ability to to increase those so after a, I think it's about two or three successful payments at that 250 level you can absolutely start to double that payment threshold um, I believe up to about a thousand dollars within the within the site itself to kind of avoid a lot of small uh, credit card uh, charges if you're running multiple campaigns and then if the $1,000 mark is still not enough, uh, feel free to contact us, uh, myself, Ian, uh, Dot Murphy at, at audiogo.com, and we'll make sure to, to help uh, work with you to customize um, the threshold to, to what fits your needs. Great, thanks, Ian. Uh, next question is, can you view the campaign report within a specific date range? Yeah, I can jump in on that one, Kate. And so with the, the campaign report right now, the way that it works is it's, per campaign, and you'll actually just see the entire lifetime uh, data for the campaign. So uh, we don't have the ability today to kind of edit that, that date range. You will see, you know, which dates have which, uh, uh, which data. So you'll see on, you know, this day we had this many clicks and, you know, on the fifth we had this many clicks, but right now we aren't able to sort of specify the date range or make edits there. That's, it's something that I believe that we're, we're working on. Our, our product team has been doing an amazing job of coming up with um, new imp product improvements, new data for reporting, a new way to show you that data. So they're constantly making changes there. So it might be something we have relatively soon, but as of today, um, it just kind of shows the, the lifetime uh, data of the campaign. Yeah, right. I do think it's coming. I think it's coming within 
the next quarter, but definitely by the end of the year, I'm, I'm fairly certain. All right, next question, we do have a few more. Uh, is it possible to work with Bunny Studio directly to customize the audio ad further than the prompts given in Audio Go? Thanks for the information. That's for you, Kitty. Um, yes, as in we're always open to communicating directly with you guys. I think it's just a case of aligning with Audio Go um, to see what communication channel is best for everyone. Um, but yeah, definitely, if you have you know really specific requirements, etc., then we can definitely help you out. Yeah, and that's totally fine with us too. That's even why we're doing this this webinar is that we have, you know, we have it kind of uh, offered within Audio Go. But if you want to work with Bunny Studio directly to create something more uh, robust, or you have something more specific in terms of voiceover talent, or, or you know, whatever beyond the kind of, um, you know, um, capability that we have on, on the integrated platform, that's that's great. That's perfectly fine with us. Uh, yeah, and one last thing to add there, Kate. Just to, as Kitty mentioned, just we work so closely together that you know, just let either one of us know, and we'll we'll find a solution for you. I mean, it's it's really that simple, and we've we've handled all a variety of requests of adding just voice, just music, all kinds of things, adding multiple voices. So yeah, just reach out to either one of us and we'll make sure to, to help you out. Next question, do you have, this is a good one, do you have the ability to incorporate additional third-party tracking? Example, IAS Nielsen. Um, Ian, do you know, I, we don't today. Yeah. Uh, I, um, shoot, I- yeah, I, uh, I, can, I can jump in on that one, yeah. yeah so go ahead. I, I, yes. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, you so, go. so like you like you mentioned, Kate. Yeah, we don't. So um, you know, of course, there's a variety of tools out there. There's pixels. There's all kinds of things you can um, integrate into landing pages. And so today, we don't have anything in our in our platform where you can include um, you know third party tracking or or anything like that. Uh, we have had clients who have you know somewhat creatively found ways to you know put it on their their landing pages and things like that. Or you know, for example, we do have a, a partners that we work with, uh, they're actually act named Active Demand, who do offer very affordable call tracking. Um, that's a third, you know, kind of a third party tracking and that's going to be a local area code. And I believe it's just about $3 per month per line. And you don't have to commit to anything outside of uh, just the one month there. So we, we don't have it in app um, or in, in our platform, but we absolutely have uh, partners we could refer you to for that. And, and basically just, you know, let us know your request and we could figure out the best way for you to uh, go about tracking but yeah short answer there is yeah. not in the platform today but um but we do have resources to help you yeah and i'll give a little more longer answer to the short answer yeah the, the so the the company that ian's referring to is called active demand um so feel free to contact them about some of the different ways you can do attribution and measurement and tracking um i believe we are adding some uh like pixel you know tracking um i don't know the timing i think it's by the end of the year and then I don't know if the other thing was uploading, um, you know, like customer data, a third party list. And I think that also is coming, but I don't have timing. So that might be kind of the end of the year, kind of in the six month range. So um, great question. These are all things that we are, that are definitely on our roadmap and, and things that we're thinking about. Uh, next question. Can you specify which platforms the ads run on? Can users see CTRs for each platform? All right. I think when you're saying platform, you're talking about the audio publisher. And so um, no, uh, what you're doing here with this plot with, with Audio Go is you're uh, reaching an audience. So, you know, we're saying you, we've aggregated um, all of the different publishers, you know, Pandora, iHeart. So the different publishers are Pandora, iHeart, TuneIn, Cumulus, Entrevision for Spanish language and Stitcher for podcasts. And we it it we basically run the ads you know if you're trying to reach women 18 to 24 in a certain zip code it will it will find them so you can't say i want to run only on pandora or i only want to run on iheart and one of the benefits of that actually is that by having a larger pool of inventory to to kind of pull from you can do better targeting you know if you want to reach in a zip code you know, a certain, you know, men, you know, 18 to 24, um, if it was only one of them, it'd be harder to have that available inventory and pulling them all together allows a benefit for you all in terms of targeting. So I, I don't know if that answered your question. And in terms of CTR, you can see your click-through rate on the 
um, on the dashboard, on your personal dashboard there, but it will be the click-through rate on that banner ad across all of the publishers. We don't break it down by specific publisher. So I hope that answered your question. How many revisions do we have for audio ads? Um, we offer one revision, is that right, uh, Ian and Kitty? One free yeah. and then you pay for, if you want to do another one, it just we just charge a little bit extra. Yeah, um, that's that's exactly right. And so it's, um, you know, first revision is free. I believe after that, it's uh, I think about $40 for a revision. And I, one thing I did want to point out is we're, we are relatively flexible and, you know, if it's, it's really more so if you decide to change, um, you know, kind of a, a core element of the, um, of the ad that after a first revision, that's when we would, you know, uh, talk about that, that second revision pricing. But uh, I did want to point out that let's say for whatever reason, if we, you know, accidentally, um, and this is, it's very rare, but if the team accidentally, uh, you know, mispronounces a word or we miss something in the script, we won't charge for that type of revision. But um, yeah, did want to just point that out that we're, we're very flexible. But the kind of typical is the first revisions free and then forty dollars for revisions after that. Great. Uh, next question: What is considered a good in quotes a good CTR click through rate for a campaign with display ads? Um, I can I can take that one. So the average CTR click through rate um, for a mobile display ad is 0.14%. That's the average. And part of that is because, you know, on a mobile device, and again, this is, you know, not all of our ads are served on mobile devices. I think about half are on mobile, um, you know, with the other on computers or smart speakers or that kind of thing. Um, but on a mobile device, people are often doing, you know, other things. Um, and so, so there's a couple things to note. One is we actually have gotten feedback that our click-through rates are are pretty good on Audio Go. I'm not I'm not even sure why that is, but we've gotten that feedback. But more uh, importantly, is I think what we tend to do, we as sort of human beings and wanting to measure, you know, how quote unquote effective something is, is we go to the click-through rate as a uh, as a as a measure of effectiveness and with uh with an audio with an audio campaign um it really isn't i mean if you think about when you've heard audio ads you're like oh well that's interesting oh maybe i'll check that out you 99 out of 100 times have not clicked on the on the banner display ad and so that's what when we were talking before when um ian was talking before about different things with calls to action whether it's a uh prom you know offering a promo code or the url or a, a phone call or trying to do uh, something um, a bit more specific and measurable. That's um, you know that's one way to measure. The other thing, just to note that we've noted, is that we have data that shows, and it it varies. So I'll I'll stay away from numbers, but well, I'm going to say a number because of the one is four times um, a lift in click through rates on the banner ads when it's accompanied with audio. So what what am I trying to say? If you're running like a Facebook camp campaign or you're doing something online, when you layer audio on top, we've seen an increase in the engagement in um, that online media, and that kind of makes sense, right? You know, you're you're you have your your digital campaigns, and then you hear it, and you're like, oh yeah, you know, so it's kind of in the back of your mind. So the audio really is is a great kind of um, addition to an existing digital campaign and usually what the audio does is it will enhance um, engagement with a digital campaign but the audio kind of doesn't get the credit you know what i mean so so that was a long answer to a short question about click-through rates and um uh, for audio campaigns is there a time limit to the ad the audio ad that's a great question um are they all 30 seconds ian or do we offer 15s or how can you yeah you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so the the slot on audio go that you get is thirty seconds. Um, so, um, we we definitely recommend using that full time. Now, some some users um, have decided that they want us to do a fifteen second ad, which our platform will accept that. That's totally fine. But as far as I understand it, we do you know give you the full thirty second slot. So, we recommend to to use the full time to get your message across. Great. And I know we're getting close to the hour. I've got I think four more questions here. So this is great. Ian, I can't remember, I should know the answer to this one too. Can we put the audio ads on our website and perhaps use it in other ways? I know yeah. you can't. Yeah, do we, on the audio go ads, is it? 
Yeah. So unfortunately, since you know, since we are producing them at a you know very affordable rate with our partner and and that sort of thing, we we do only allow it to run on AudioGo and other AdsWiz related channels. So um, I unfortunately we can't use it in any other ways. Now, just putting it on your website that is a good question. I uh, you know I don't want to say the wrong thing here from a legal standpoint, yeah. but I don't think there would be any particular issue with just putting it on your website as an example of um, of what you've done, but let us let us confirm that uh, we would want of course yeah, yeah go ahead Kate. The other, yeah the other answer to that is I think we charge you know it's ten dollars I mean it's essentially free so we kind of want you to use it on audio go and I don't remember where we ended up in terms of you know physically and technically restricting you but you can work directly with Bunny Studios and I think uh, exactly Kitty uh, correct me if I'm wrong it's like 150 or 200 dollars or something to, to to get an ad so if you really want to you know, have one that you own or have some more flexibility, you can just work directly with with uh, with Bunny Studio. Okay. Yes, correct. Great. Uh, and then that's the next question. Can the Bunny Studio audio ads be released to use on local radio stations? That's right. If you work directly with Bunny Studio, you you own the ad. You know, they'll they'll create it, you own it, you can you can run it wherever you want. But Kitty, is that right? I just want to make sure I'm answering yeah. that correctly. With all of our creative services, as soon as you receive any type of deliverable, it's yours to use uh, freely, wherever and for however long you want. Great. Uh, next, I know it's 11 o'clock. We'll, we'll still go. We've got three or four more questions, which are great. What makes a good audio voiceover script? That is an excellent question um, and a longer answer. If you go to the audiogo.com uh, website, there's a blog that we have, and we do have one that's uh it's it's running a good audio campaign or writing a good script i can't remember but there's a longer answer there that's around you know specific call to action speaking to your audience all of that i kitty you may have other kind of nuggets to to better um answer to answer that question um do you have yeah definitely but also just to add you know we have a script writing service so we can assist with that creative as well um and i'm sure that you know, opening the communication channel with um, audio go users, then we could definitely jump in and help you actually create the script from scratch um, if that's required. And I think also we do have some um, materials, maybe some blog posts um, or some stuff in our voiceover community that could be helpful to some um, who would like to write it themselves. Um, so I'd be more than happy to, to send that information in a follow up. Great. Um, thank you. Next is as an agency, how would I handle multiple clients in the platform? Are there plans for multiple accounts? That's an excellent question. Right now, you each account's associated with an email, so you can run multiple campaigns, but if you want to kind of share the login with your client and they can log in, um, you'd, ha you'd have kind of one, um, I don't know if that makes sense, but one one login. Uh, I, uh, yeah, it's, it, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think of how to answer that. We have a lot of agencies using the platform. That's our number one uh, kind of you know uh, group that's using it. And typically, what they do is just they'll they'll run multiple campaigns and name them differently. So you can handle multiple clients in the platform. Again, if you wanted to have separate accounts that you would actually share with your clients in terms of letting them log in, each one will need a unique email. And we do have also on the roadmap kind of ideas for um, managing multiple accounts more uh, robustly for um, smaller agencies. Ian, do you have any other, did I, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I think you pretty much covered it. I mean, and th that's really how agencies are using our platform today. There's almost kind of two different options. One is to kind of have a, just one master account where you create campaigns on behalf of your clients. Um, and as Kate mentioned, it's best practice would be to really make sure in the campaign name uh, to include the client name to help you differentiate. And another thing to point out there too is because, you know, of course, some agencies will prefer to be able to have read only access for their clients so that they can log in and see this. We, we don't have that today. And as Kate mentioned, we're working towards some of those capabilities, but you can always export everything out of the platform so you can share it in a, a you know, CSV file. So you can always share the data that way. And then, like you mentioned, Kate, um, another way that some agencies work with us is they'll create multiple accounts, um, you know, one for each client, and then kind of operate that way. So 
a little bit of a, a workaround for right now, but we absolutely understand the need for these type of controls and it's, it's uh, something that we're working towards um, you know, as we speak. So definitely keep an eye out for more of those uh, type of controls as an agency coming out soon. Um, thank you. Uh, the next question, it looks like there's two more questions. So thanks for those that are still hanging on. Um, can I get a copy of the printed presentation? Sure. Uh, why don't you email Ian? It's Ian, I-A-N dot Murphy, M-U-R-P-H-Y, Ian dot Murphy at audiogo.com. Is that right, Ian? Is That's that it. Yep, that, exactly. I'll make sure yeah, to get that to you. Get you that. Also, a little plug, if you go to our website, we do have um, uh, kind of a, uh, for agencies, we have a e-guide that's kind of a document that walks through different case studies and how to get started and, um, you know, the power of digital audio and how effective it is and different things like that. So we have some some things like that. But I think maybe what you're asking for, if, if you're part of an agency, is this is something that's useful for your clients. So that's absolutely great. We'll be happy to share it. Uh, last question, unless any others come on. Um, what is the percentage of paid subscribers versus free listeners? And is there an opportunity to reach paying listeners? Okay, that's a great question. I think what you're asking is, um, let's see, uh, let me, I'm gonna try to answer that. I think what the question is, is are we reaching, like on Pandora, there are some people that are paying for the, for the service, for the Pandora service, and can you reach them? So no, because when you do, when you pay, the, what you're paying for is to not get the audio ads. So, and that's one thing to to note here is that, like, if you go to, for example, Spotify, a lot of people love Spotify. I love Spotify. Um, it's mostly a subscription service, which means there aren't uh, as many, um, the, you know, kind of 80-20 rule. And I don't know what the exact number is, but like the smaller percentage is uh, is ad supported. So, they have a service where you can do audio advertising on the Spotify platform, but it's a, and again, I love Spotify, but it's a smaller pool of, of audio ads because they have a higher percentage of people that are on paid subscription. With Pandora, it's flipped. It's more supported by audio advertising than paid subscription. So with just even Pandora alone, there's an order of magnitude, more inventory. And then when we're bundling in, also, um, you know, Cox and Cumulus and TuneIn and iHeart, um, we've got a lot of audio ad inventory so you can get pretty precision with your um, targeting. So no, there isn't an opportunity to reach the paying listeners but that, because that's sort of what they're paying for, <laughs> if, that, if that makes sense. Uh, all right, that is the last question. We are seven minutes over, so it looks like some of you have stayed the extra time and really appreciate you taking the time. Again, if you have any questions for Kitty, um, her email is here. If you have any questions for Ian, it's uh, ian.murphy at audiogo.com. Uh, we really appreciate you taking time uh, out of your valuable time out of your day for to attend the webinar and feel free to uh, follow up with with any additional questions if you have them. So with that, um, I think we'll end. If there's any, I don't think there's any last questions. Thank you very much for your time, and stay safe and healthy, and have a great day. Okay, bye bye.